Good morning. I'm always tempted to say happy Sabbath. I think you just kind of do that. And, um, but during the week, I'm sure I'll get used to this. Um, it's so nice to see so many. I, I, I've, I had a chance to meet some of you already at breakfast, and it was really nice to, to get a chance to meet you, meeting new friends. And I had a chance to see some old friends, and that was really, really neat. And I can't wait to get reacquainted with you. I see some of your faces I haven't talked to you yet. And I'm hoping to get a chance to get around to doing that. Well, as it was mentioned already, uh, for those who don't know, my name is Anthony, uh, Anthony Montague. I'm an instructor at uh, Messiah's Mansion and been working at that ministry for almost a year now, uh, probably a little over a year, actually. And one of the things I do is that I'm, I'm training. Um, I train young people. I train uh, now we're, we're having somewhat of a training college, if you, if you will. And my, my portion, my responsibility is to deal with the prophecy side of, of, of our school. So I, right now I'm going through some Daniel prophecies. And it's really fascinating as I'm going through it. Hopefully if I get a chance to talk to you, ask me all the questions you want. I don't have all the answers, I'll tell you. I don't have all the answers. But I really appreciate the questions. And I can, hopefully I can share with you some of the things I'm learning from the book of Daniel. You know, we can see the gospel in prophecy. We can see the gospel in the books of Daniel and Revelation, and I'm really getting excited about uh, that. So I would love to share with you. If you want to ask me questions about that, feel free. Um, the other thing I want to share with you is as I was coming in, every time I come to Washita Hills, because I was a student here, um, here on campus, and had a chance to just, just be involved with the program here, I always have good memories whenever I come through, and as I was coming, uh, as I was driving in yesterday, I was just, you know, seeing some of the animals I don't normally see, and those of you who really know me, I really like birds. I, I can't say I'm like a bird watcher, but I like watching birds, if, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, but I saw something, my favorite bird to see is an eagle. And I saw an eagle as I was coming in. I was like, wow, God knows how much I like eagles. Like, God knows me. And, he, and I was just like, wow, what a, what a peaceful and beautiful thing. Uh, yeah, God just really knows me. And I was just really thankful for that. But as I was coming in, some of the memories, I was just really, really blessed. So this week, um, I want to share with you something that God has been teaching me. Above all the prophecy and all the things, I really, really enjoy prophecy and the sanctuary I want to share something God has really been dealing with me on. The Bible actually says, I want to read this passage before we go into our, our thought this morning. Sorry, let's go to the book of John. The Bible says this in John chapter 17. And I'm going to look at verse 3. It says, and this is life eternal. I hear pages turning, so you may want to go there too. John chapter 17, verse 3. We'll read this passage, then we'll pray. How are you all feeling this morning? Good, good. The Bible says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You know, out of all the things I've ever learned, out of all the things that God has been teaching me, there's nothing that's been more important to me than simply knowing God. That's just been so, like, to, to know God, to have God become more real in my life, that's like, in a world in which we live, that is the most important thing in my life right now, to know God. To, what does it really mean to know God? I want to share with you this week some things I've been learning. And I'm not sharing this because it seems like, oh, you know, I have the, I have the book on how this works. But... As someone who, who desires to see my brothers and sisters grow in their walk with God, to, to be ready for Jesus to come, to, to be that light that they need to be in the world, um, this is something God has laid on my heart. And so I want to I share with you this week, what does it mean to really know God? How do we know God? And I'm going to be sharing some experiences in the morning. I'll probably share some testimonies with you, um, just things that God has done in my life. And in the evening, we're going to be looking at some very practical, hopefully practical things that will be very helpful uh, for all of us. But with that being said, uh, let's have a word of prayer. And so I also want to ask that as you're praying uh, this week, that you'll be praying in that line. 
praying, Lord, how do we really know you? How do we make that real in our lives? I want to ask you to be praying for that. Let's pray. I'm going to go ahead and kneel. You can just bow your heads uh, with me as we pray. Our Father in heaven, I want to thank you for Jesus. Lord, there's so much, and the more I get to know you through your Son, Lord, I'm, I'm, there's so much that you have done for us. You mean so much to us. And I want to pray this week, I want to pray this morning, that you would help reveal more of yourself to us. Lord, help us to love you, because that is supernatural. We don't have it in ourselves. Lord, be with us now. Direct us by the grace of your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bible, go with me to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. And I want to share a thought with you, and then I'll share a brief testimony. Revelation chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 1. And the Bible says, of course, we probably, hopefully you're familiar with this, it says, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Notice here when it comes to the revelation of Jesus, the Bible actually says it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It says, which God gave unto him, and it says to show unto his servant the things which must shortly come to pass. But then it says, and Jesus sent it to his servant John. He sent it to his servant John through an angel. Notice here that we see that God the Father and the Son are invested in the revelation of Jesus Christ. They are, in, they are interested in this thing, right? Go with me to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, we see the Father and the Son are interested in this revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, notice what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 6. You see this over and over again um, in, in the book of Revelation, actually not in, in, in verse 6. Let's look at verse, um, verse 7. And the Bible says this is, this is the, uh, the church of Ephesus. But when we get to this end of the, or the last part of the church of Ephesus, you're going to see something that's reoccurring in each and every church. And notice what the Bible says. In verse 7, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what who saith? What the Spirit saith unto the churches. So notice here when we look at the Bible, we see that God the Father is invested in the revelation. We see God the Son is invested in the revelation, and now we see the God the Holy Spirit. Go with me in your Bible to Revelation chapter 5. Revelation chapter 5. And let's begin looking at, I don't want to go through the whole passage this morning, but let's go ahead and look at verse uh, 8. It says, and when he had taken the book, this is Jesus taking the book, this little book with all the, the they're, they're sealed with seven seals. Jesus takes that book, and the Bible says when he takes this book, verse 8, and we had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And it says, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Notice what the Bible says. Let's go down to verse, um, let's go down to verse 11. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Notice when we read in the book of Revelation chapter 5, we also see, we just saw that God the Father is invested in the revelation of Jesus Christ. We saw God the Son is invested in the revelation of Jesus Christ. We saw the Holy Spirit is speaking to the hearts, pointing them to and understanding the revelation of Jesus Christ, giving the message to the heart. And then now we see that when it comes to this, this, this scroll that was rolled up and it was sealed, and now Jesus is found worthy to open it, what do the angels do? They're like, Worthy is the lamb. The beast are like, worthy is the lamb. Essentially what we see here is that all of heaven is invested in the salvation of mankind. Go with me to Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. 
In Revelation chapter 22, and look with me in verse 17. And it says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth. By the way, what is it that they're hearing? The Bible says, Let them hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. It says, And let them that heareth say, Say, Come. So now the Bible says that if you have heard the message of salvation, then what do you say now? You go tell someone else to come. Here we find that the Bible shows that all heaven and those who have received the message that heaven is trying to give, they are all invested and interested in the salvation of man. I share this thought with you because it was this thought that changed my life. In a different way. There was many thoughts that changed my life, but this thought changed my life in a different way than where, where my life was going before, uh, in the sense. And I want to share that with you. There's a quotation in the Spirit of Prophecy. This isn't a story of redemption. And this is what this passage, this is what it says. Some of you are probably familiar with this. Let's see if I can find the right one. This is in the chapters right before the time of Jacob's trouble. The story of Redemption is one of my favorite uh, books, by the way. And this is what it says. Ellen White says, Then I saw Jesus lay off his priestly attire. This is his priestly, his priestly ministry is, is done. She says he lays off his priestly attire. And then she says, And clothed himself with his most kingly robes. Upon his head were many crowns, a crown within a crown. Can you imagine what that must have looked like? And then she says, surrounded by the angelic hosts, he left heaven. The plagues were falling upon the inhabitants of the earth. Some were denouncing God and cursing him. Others rushed to the people of God and begged to be taught how they might in escape his judgments. But the saints had nothing for them. And then she says, the last tear for sinners had been shed. The last agonizing prayer offered. The last burden born, the last warning given, the sweet voice of mercy was no more in, to invite them when the saints in all heaven were interested in their salvation, they had no interest in themselves. Life and death had been, been set before them. Many desired life but made no effort to obtain it. Notice what she says here. She says that Heaven, both heaven and the saints, were interested in their salvation. Didn't we just see that in the book of Revelation? All heaven and the saints are interested in the salvation of lost souls. It was this quotation that brought the thought in my mind that something in my life has to change. And it wasn't the idea that something in my life has to change because at, at this point I was actually becoming, uh, I was in the process, I was doing Bible studies, I was actually, my life was already starting to change in that matter, in that, in that way. But there was something about what I was doing about the salvation of souls that had to change. I want to share a little bit about how that change took place in my life. And I want to share with you a little bit about how that, what does that have to do with me knowing God? I believe the year was 2000 and, and, uh, 2005. Well, I'm getting mixed up. I want to say 2015. It was 2005. I was going to a community college um, in Tennessee. I was living in, uh, it was in Gallatin, Tennessee. I was living in Portland, Tennessee, not too far. And at the moment in my life, there was a lot of things that were going on in my life. Um, but at the moment in my life, I, I was, you know, I was struggling with my health at the time, and the biggest thing is I didn't know what to do with my life. I knew that I wanted to, to make a change in my life. I knew I wanted to serve God, and I knew in my heart of hearts, I was like, you know what? I want to do something for God, but I want to make money too. Has anyone else ever been there? Okay, maybe some of us don't want to admit it. I was like, I want to do something for God, but I want to make money too. And I had tried different things. I had different interests. Um, I have, I have um, and I'll share a little bit more about that problem. Well, maybe not. But I have uncles in my family who are actors. They've acted in, in various movies. And, you know, I'm not going to say they're the most famous guys out there, but they've acted with famous people. 
And so I was into, into that. You know, I, was, I would hang out uh, with one of my uncles a lot, and I was like, man, maybe I should, I should do that. Now, could you imagine me being an actor? I, it doesn't work for me. Like, I don't even know how to, like, I, I don't know how to act. And, um, I mean, I know how to act. Like, my mom showed me, told me how to act, but I'm saying, like, I don't know how to be an actor. That's the thing I'm saying. Um, and so I was like, maybe I should do that. And so I went to my uncle. I was like, hey, maybe, you know. And he was like, you know what? This, this business is a hard business to be in. And he, was, he basically told me you won't make it. Okay. I'm thankful that he did that. Um, and so I tried other things. Um, I really enjoyed... Before, I used to, to, to rap a lot. I used to write songs and do things like that of that nature. And people tried to tell me how to get into gospel rap. That wasn't working for me. So that's not going to go. <clears throat> okay, so that was out this question. And so I went through all these different things. But there was one thing I always wanted to do, and I was like, wow, I could probably do very well in that. I could probably make money in that. And so I wanted to be a, um, an engineer. So I, I, went, I started studying that. But as I was doing that, I really didn't find a uh, purpose. I really was like, oh, man, I'm just really not finding purpose. My, I started really getting depressed about this. I was like, this, I'm not finding any purpose in this. And besides that, my health was not, not great. And, but I was still going to school, and I was doing Bible studies. And in the process of doing these Bible studies, um, I started, when I would go to school, I would take my, like, all, like, I was studying with these elders at my church, and I was like, man, it just... The only peace I have is when I'm with God. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to school, but while I'm at school, I'm going to take these certain books. I'm, I'm going to go in between classes. I'm going to study my Bible. And, you know, I really wanted to love God, right? And so I would take these books, and the books I took, I remember I took Daniel and Revelation uh, with me, this big, thick book. And I would take that, and I would go to the library between classes, and I'd be reading this book. I probably understood 2% of what I was reading, maybe a little bit more. But I, was, I didn't understand a lot of it, but I was like, man, this is, this is interesting. And I took some other books. And one of the books I also took was uh, Story of Redemption. I haven't, hadn't read too many Ellen White books at the time, but this one seemed to be really interesting. I was reading through Story of Redemption, and I tell you, that book was fascinating. I was like, wow, I never knew these things were happening. I never knew that's what happened to the plan of salvation. Like, I was really, look, if you had never read Story of Redemption, that's a good book to start with, I think. So I was reading through that, going to the library, between classes, I would read this. And it was in the process of reading Story of Redemption. I'm cutting my story a little bit short this morning um, because there's other things I want to get, get to in the story. But in the process of reading that book, I came across the statement I just read to you. And that statement, uh, it really changed my life. It really, as I mentioned, it really just, I was... I remember reading it. I was going through the story of redemption. It was like this buildup. I was like, wow, I really enjoy this book. And I got to that statement. And I remember reading it, and literally, I started crying. I could not control the tears. I'm in the library. It's supposed to be quiet. And I'm just sniffling, and I'm crying. And I thought to myself, because I knew that even though I was coming to Jesus myself, I had so many friends of mine who were in and out of jail. I had friends of mine, my family members who were in and out of jail. Um, I had so many people back home where I grew up in Memphis. I knew so many people who did not have the opportunity to, have, to, to experience what I was experiencing. And I was like, you know what? What if this quotation describes them? What if they don't have this opportunity? Heaven, if heaven is interested in their salvation, who's going to give it to them? And I just start crying. I remember leaving the campus that day, and as I was walking to campus, I still had tears in my eyes, and I, was, I don't know if, you know, people, I wasn't really paying attention to people's reaction, but I would literally walk on campus, and I would look at people, and I didn't know what to do, but I knew, like, that's a soul that needs to be saved. That's a soul. Tears in my eyes. And I got home, and I said, Lord, I know that I'm going to work for you. I don't know how long. I just know that I'm going to work for you. All my plans, look, I'm just all the way, I'm just surrendering it to you. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to try to be halfway working for God and halfway trying to make my own living and make money and do the things I enjoy. It's all yours. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I went home and I told my mom about this. I was like, look, I know what I'm going to do. You know, I haven't been at peace, but I'm going to work for God. I know, you know, and... and I guess there were some things I had said in that conversation that made her think, like, that's great, but slow down. 
And so I was, I was sharing this with her, and I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know I'm going to work for you. And that's what I start doing. Um, I started working in church, and, and whatever ministry was in church, and by the way, I, I also said, I'm going to go back home because there's people there who have not had this opportunity to hear the truth. Um, but I didn't know how I was going to get there. I didn't know how I was going to get paid, whatever. Um, but anyway, I started working in church, and my work in church didn't seem like it was big at all. I went to, I went to um, when they had um, the uh, nursing home ministry, I went to the, where the nursing home ministry was, and I really didn't do anything at all. I didn't lead out in music. I didn't feel like I was a singer. Um, I didn't, I, I preached once. I, my first sermon was at, was at a nursing home, and that's a whole story in itself, why I ended up doing that. But generally, I didn't preach. All I did was go to the nursing home and share the hymn book and smile at people and say, how are you doing? I was like, this, I'm not doing anything, right? Uh, I went to whatever other ministry I joined. I joined uh, door to door. I would go door to door. I would, you know, the church would go door to door. I would go door to door. And I really didn't do anything. Like, I would go door to door, and I just kind of held the books. And when someone needed one, because someone else I was with, they would do all the talking. I'm like, I think they're going to need. I didn't feel like I was doing anything. I would go to Bible studies with the elders, and I didn't say anything. I would just kind of go and just sit there. I didn't do anything. I ended up going to jail ministry. Oh, man, jail ministry was exciting. But when I was in jail ministry, I was like, what? I, I didn't know what purpose I was there. I was just kind of there. Like, there was, back then, well, the jail we went to, they used to let you bring in instruments. I couldn't play an instrument. If some of my friends played. I didn't play an instrument. I didn't preach. Uh, I was just there. But I wanted to do something for God. How many of you feel like you want to do something for God, but you feel like, I don't have, I don't have the talents, I don't have a, you know, sometimes we struggle with that. But God, look, I want to encourage you, just go. You might feel like, I can't do anything, just go. That was me. So I just started going and praying and telling people, I'm going to be working for God. And they're like, but you, you know, they didn't really tell me that. They were kind of like, yeah, well, praise God. Well, just kind of slow down. I can remember one day, in all this, this prayer time, um, I was still going to school, and I went to the cafeteria. I don't know why I went to the cafeteria, but I just, I went there. And when I got to the cafeteria, I saw a, a classmate of mine, a girl that graduated me from when I was, I went to Highland Academy. And the young lady, she was in my class, we graduated together, and she was there. Now, I don't, I don't ever remember her being that religious. Uh, but she was there, and I was like, oh, you know, a good friend of mine. So we started talking. Her sister was there. Her sister graduated a year before me, and there were some other young people there. And we were all just sort of talking. And it turned out, while we were talking, that she was saying how she had given her life to God. I was like, wow, like, I give my life to God, too. So we're, we're just exciting, all these young people. And they said, you know what? We have this, this little small group, this Bible study group. You should come. And I was like, that'd be great. I'll be there this Friday night. I'll be there. And so I did go. I, I went, and I saw some other friends of mine who weren't at the school, but they, I'd known them from other places. I was like, man, this is great. How long have you guys been doing this? Well, we've been doing this all year, just about. And, and I, I really enjoyed it. Well, after that Bible study, we had the holiday seasons come. And because of the holiday season, they were like, well, we're not going to meet. Well, they never met again, unfortunately, uh, at least that group. And so after the holidays, we were, we were I, we, you know, I, they didn't invite me, they didn't, have, they didn't have any meetings. And I can remember being at school one day, and I saw one of the young ladies uh, that was in the small group, she went to the school I was going to as well. And I saw her and I said, you know, why aren't they having, are they having the small groups? Are they going to, you know, she's like, well, we're not having it anymore. Everyone's kind of, you know, stopped doing it. And she was like, you know what, I, I would really like to start back. And I was like, you know what, I would, yeah, that'd be great. We should start it back. And she was like, well, who's going to lead it out? And I was like, man, I don't know. Like, she said, well, why don't you lead it out? I never given a Bible study before. And I just said, I was like, okay, I'll do it. And I went home and was like, what am I, I've never given a Bible Like, what did I just, what did I just get myself into? And so I'm at, I'm at home, I tell my mom, I was like, look, we're going to have these small groups, people are coming over, do you think you can like, get some popcorn, juice, just some light stuff, you know, Friday evening? She's like, sure, that's great. 
we get this thing going. People are coming, like young people are coming, people from the church. I had called so many people up. And you want to know what my Bible studies were like? I would literally, like I was just new at studying the Bible, by the way. I would literally get up in front of everyone. We would talk, we would kind of mingle together, and then I would get up, and I would say, all right, you know, so for our Bible study this evening, I'm just going to share with you what I was reading this week. And, you know, so I'd just kind of read through, and then I was like, you know, I think what I got out of this was this, and, you know, then I learned this, and, and then when I was done, I was like, so what do you guys get out of that? And it was like, okay. Good study. All right, well, you guys have a good evening. We'll meet you guys next week. And that was my Bible study. I did not know how to give a Bible study. And this went on for a few weeks. And I remember um, after a while, at first it was, it, was, it was really growing, but after a while I, I began to notice that there, it stopped growing. Uh, young people started, they were, they were kind of going somewhere else, it seemed. And so I started finding out, like, well, where is everyone going? Like, people aren't showing up for Bible study? Like, what's happening? And they told me, they said, you know what, there is this, the Hendersonville Church, it's near, uh, if you're from Tennessee, you probably, it's near Gallatin area. They said in Hendersonville, there's this evangelistic series going on, and the Bible workers that's, that's there, she does small groups. And everyone has really been enjoying it, so we kind of been going, and I was like, oh, really? Hmm. <laughs> so everyone's going to that small group. And I'm going to confess something to you. I got jealous. You know, isn't it interesting how sometimes we can get um, competitive in the work of God? I got jealous. I was like, oh, man. Like, and then every week, people were just dropping off. And, I, and, and now I have all the, the food ready. And I remember one night, I had this food ready. I was like, oh, we're going to have this Bible study. No one showed up. And I was like, everyone's going over to Hendersonville, you know. So what am I going to do? I remember talking to God about this, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit working for God. And I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> like, I'm committed. I'm, I'm going to do something for God. And like, nah, that's not in the question. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to, get, I'm going to do better than what they're doing over there. And I was like, uh, first of all, you have never given a Bible study. You know, <laughs> you need to. And then the thought came to my mind. You know, have you ever heard that phrase, like, if you can't beat them, why don't you join them? So I was like, well, why don't I go over there and find out what it is that everyone's enjoying? And I prayed about it. I was like, all right, I'm going to go. And I reluctantly went. I, I went, and sure enough, I got there. And within minutes, I enjoyed it. And guess what happened next week? I went back. <laughs> and I went back, and I was like, man, this is great. And I was like, and, and the young lady that was leading the Bible study, I called her my sister in evangelism, one of, the, one of my favorite Bible workers to work with, uh, but she was leading out, and I can remember one day I was going to this Bible study. Remember, I had this big heart to work for God. I had this big heart to, to do evangelism, and I wanted to go to Memphis. And I remember this week, this was just such a burden on my heart. I get to the Bible study, and, and they were doing prayer requests. And as they're going around, they were like, um, so they get to me. They say, what, are your, what is your prayer request? And I said, you know, guys, all this week I've been having this burden. I've been wanting to go to Memphis. I don't know where I'm going to, you know, I, I, I had this weird idea. My grandparents lived in Memphis. I had this weird idea that if I end up going and do ministry work and, and quit my education, my grandparents would disown me. That wasn't the case. But my grandparents were really big in education. Um, my grandfather was a professor, and my, my grandmother was a teacher, too. Um, so I felt like, oh, you know what? I could never ask them if I could live with them. Um, but that wasn't the case. I ended up living with them later. But, um, but this was my request. I said, look, I really, really want to go to Memphis. This has been on my heart. There's souls there. They haven't had this opportunity. As I'm sharing my testimony, my friend who was over the Bible, work, uh, the, the Bible study, her name was Lavinia, she was right across from me. We were in a circle, and she was just like, ah, oh, like what, you know? And I was like, everyone kind of stops, and they're like, well, do you want to say something? She's like, no, 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 just, just, just keep it going around, and when it comes to me, I'll say something. The testimonies keep going around, the prayer requests, and it comes around to Levine, and she was the last one, and she said, you know, the conference has just asked me to go to Memphis to do Bible work, but I told the Lord, I don't want to go, because that's a rough place. I mean, literally, people would, when they would travel to Memphis, they would, they would, 
go around the city, is what I'm told, um, because they didn't want to go through it. And she's like, it's a rough place. I'm a, I'm a lady. I don't want to work there. And that specific year, they had like the highest rate in homicides per whatever people it is. I don't know how they measure that. And so she's like, I really didn't want to go. So she said, I prayed to God, and I said, Lord, two things I'm praying for. If, you, if the, my Bible work partner is, is you got to be a guy because I can't study with the guys. She said, but also have someone who lived there, who grew up there, have them work for me. She's like, if, Lord, if you provide that, then maybe I would consider going. She just prayed that that week. I show up. That whole week, I've been burdened. I need to go. I need to go, but I don't know how I'm going to get there. I get to the Bible study, and that's my prayer request. And that's her prayer request. And she comes to me later. She's like, this is what's been happening. You need to pray about this. And I'm like, I'm almost thinking like, I don't have to. I already know I'm going, right? Um, But I prayed about it. And then a good friend of mine, the conference official, Rocky Davis, she said, I'm going to have him call you. He called me up, and I don't know, that had to have been the worst Bible work interview ever because I had all the wrong answers. Looking back, it's like, he asked me certain things. I, was ha- I had all the wrong answers. If I was interviewing myself, I wouldn't have hired me, right? But then he's like, well, why do you want to do this? Like, like what, what, what do you, have you had any experience Bible working? And you know what I told them? Well, I've been giving Bible studies in my home. <laughs> Those same Bible studies, like, hey, you know, today. I was like, I've been giving Bible studies in my home, right? Um, kind of remind me of David. David's like, I fought the lion and the bear, you know? Um, and so I shared that. He was like, really? Called me back later. He was like, you know what? We think we're going to hire you to be her, her Bible work partner. Whoa. Wow, I knew God was going to come through. I ended up going to Memphis, and long story short, it was a huge blessing. There were some trials. There were some things that happened, but I saw God in a mighty way, and what I realized is that as I started working for him, guess what happened to my experience in giving a Bible study and studying the Bible? It got better. Guess what happened to my experience in starting to trust God? It got better. Guess what started happening to my experience in loving souls? It got deeper. That year, I saw my brother get rebaptized. God opened the door for me to go. Well, you say from this experience, like, what does it have to do with knowing God? <clears throat> Some of you are already working for God, I know. Some of you are already committed. You're, you're, you're doing that. But I read this quote, and I was like, wow. This is what it says. This is from Desire of Ages, page 142. It says, he who seeks to give light to others will himself be blessed. There shall be showers of blessing. He that watereth shall be watered also himself. God could have reached his object in saving sinners without, the, without our aid. But in order for us to, de- to develop a character like Christ, we must share in his work. In order to enter into his joys, the joy of seeing souls redeemed by his sacrifice, we must participate in his labors for their redemption. Wow, that was my experience, and that is my experience. God wasn't just trying to put me in the work to, to, you know, for me to bless others, because really, God could have chose anyone else. Like, I was the last person he should have chose. But God put me there because he says, you know what? I want to develop you, and I want you to have the character that I have. I want you to know what I'm going through when I'm working with someone. My friends, this morning, it doesn't matter what you feel like your talent is. God has called each of us to do something for him. And that something for him is not just so you can go and say, well, you know what? I'm going to be a blessing to this person. I'm going to do this. But my friends, it could be God is calling you so it can be a blessing to you. In fact, I guarantee you, he's calling so it can be a blessing to you. To you. Don't shy away from what God is calling you to. Sometimes we can get so caught up in like, you know what, yeah, I'll do this little thing for God, but my real plans is this. God is saying, look, I have something bigger in store for you. And it's because I want to develop you. I want to develop you. 
I know our time is out now. I want to pray. And I want to pray that this morning we will think about the idea, what does God have for me? Not to be selfish, (laughs) but God really wants us to have the character of Christ. He wants us to know him through what we do in our ministry to others. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you for the positions that you put us in. Lord, I pray, Lord, sometimes it's so easy for us to get caught up in what we're doing and our agenda and and all these different things, and yet you have such a greater plan for us. You have a, a plan for us to know you through service. Father, I pray that you give us the burden, the interest that heaven has for souls. I pray, Lord, that we will come to know you because we see the compassion that you have for souls as we're working with them, the patience. We can be reminded, wow, that's what Jesus does for me. Father, I want to pray that you would touch our hearts. Lord, touch our lives, that we can develop and we can look and act and be like Jesus by your grace. We thank you for hearing us in Jesus' name. We are so pleased that you could join us for this special event here at Wachita Hills Academy and College. If you've enjoyed this presentation as much as I have, you can go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also, if you'd like to support making programs such as these, you can find donation information in the description below. Thank you so much again for joining us, and may God richly bless you.